Hi everyone, Kamran Nuri here. In this video, we will solve the most general one-dimensional elastic collision problem and explain the Newton's cradle as an example. Here are some animations of the cradle. At the end of this video, we will explain why it behaves like this. Okay, let's first get the general solution of elastic collisions in one dimension in class setting. When we have completely elastic collision, we have conservation of momentum and conservation of energy, right? Kinetic energy. So this is M1, is moving at speed V1, and this is M2, moving at a speed V2. V2 is less than V1, so M1 catches up and hits this one, right? This is before, and then after collision, M2 is moving at V2 prime and M1 is moving at V1 prime. All right? Suppose we know V1 and V2, we know the masses, we want to know how much is uh, V1 prime and how much is V2 prime. So we say momentum is conserved, it means that total momentum before is equal to total momentum after. So you can say M1, V1, plus M2, V2, and it is one dimensional, so I don't put arrows, it's just all x direction. But uh, these are velocities, can be positive, can be negative. If the object is going to the left, the velocity is negative, because we have x axis here, and we're talking about the x components. So uh, M1 V1 plus M2 V2 is equal to M1 V1 prime plus M2 V2 prime. That's total momentum after, total momentum before, right? But the uh, collision is elastic, we have also conservation of kinetic energy. Means that total kinetic energy before is equal to total kinetic energy after. So it's one half M1 V1 squared plus one half M2 V2 squared. That's total kinetic energy before equals to total kinetic energy after. M1 V1 prime squared plus one half M2 V2 prime squared. Right? So this, we have these two equations and we need to solve for V1 prime and V2 prime. It's two equations, two unknowns. And one of them is quadratic. So there are different techniques of doing that. If you do a little bit of a trick, it will be very simple. First of all, the one halves cancel here, and in here, I want to move M1s on one side and M2s on the other side. So if I do, M, let's say, uh, move the M2 from here to here, M1 from here to here, and do the same thing here. So we have M2, V2 minus V2 prime, equals to M1 V1 prime minus V1, right? If I move, move them around, uh, this goes here, M2 V2, M2 V2 prime, negative, and this becomes M1 V1 prime minus M1 V1, that, right? And do the same thing uh, in the other equation. We say M2, the one halves cancel, M2 times V2 prime, V2 squared, sorry, minus V2 prime squared, if we move this over, equals to M1, um, V1 prime squared minus V1 squared. Right? So, we have these two equations. Now, you see, this is V2 squared minus V2 prime squared, right? We can use the identity V2 squared minus V2 prime squared is V2 minus V2 prime times V2 plus V2 prime, right? And here we can say this is V1 prime minus V1 times V1 prime plus V1, right? And then if we divide this by the other one, only the plus remains. So we have um, V2 plus V2 prime equals to V1 
prime plus V1. If you divide the two equations, you get this. Right? Because this is this times that. Right? And the same over there. So we have this simple equation. They can, we can solve for V2 prime. But before we solve for V2 prime, I want you to look at something. Let's bring uh, all the primes on one side, all the non-primes on the other side. So here we get V2 prime minus V1 prime equal to V1 minus V2. Right? If we do that, we get this. Now look at this. What is this? V2 prime minus V1 prime. This is the relative velocity after the collision. This is the relative velocity before collision, or relative speed, rather. That's why we said that elastic collision has relative speed the same. OK, I'm not going to use this, but you can see that. But instead of that, we can say v2 prime equals to v1 prime plus v1 minus v2, right? You get this equation. And then together with this one, we can solve for, we can replace V2 prime here, or rather in here. If we put V2 prime in this equation, then we can solve for V1 prime, right? So let's write this, replace V2 prime by that expression. So we have M1 V1 plus M2 V2 equal to M1 V1 prime uh, plus M2 V2 prime, which is uh, V1 prime plus M2 V1 plus minus M2 V2. Right? Now we have one equation that has only V1 prime in it. I can solve for V1 prime. So if I uh, factor V1 prime here, we get M1 plus M2 V1 prime and move everything to the other side. If I move everything to the other side and collect uh, V1 and V2, we have M1 minus M2 times V1. And then we have M2 V2. And this is negative M2 V2 comes over, becomes 2 M2 V2 plus 2 M2 V2, then I can divide by this. So V1 prime is equal to M1 minus M2 over M1 plus M2, V1 plus 2 M2 divided by M1 plus M2 V2. And this is the complete solution for this kind of problem for uh, V1 prime. And then V2 prime is V1 prime plus this, right? So I want to add these two to this to get V2 prime. To this, because these have fractions, you can multiply by M1 plus M2 and divide by M1 plus M2. So we get this, and according to this equation, V1 minus V2 times M1 plus M2 divided by M1 plus M2, and I want to add it to this. So V2 prime is equal to, you see V1 here and V1 here. They have the same denominator, M1 plus M2. Here we have M1 minus M2 times V1, here M1 plus M2 times V1. So M1 minus M2 plus M1 plus M2. M2 cancels, you get 2M1. 2M1. V, uh, V1 plus, and this one, we have, and we have the same denominator, so let me put the denominator, M1 plus M2, and we have 2M2 times V2, negative M1, negative M2. 2M2 minus M2 becomes M2, and negative M1. So the, this is the V2 prime. 
this is complete solution for 1D elastic collision between two objects. All right. Any questions so far? So this is, these are the formulas. You don't need to do this again. I just wanted to show you where these two formulas come from. But now, look at the special cases. What happens if M1 and M2 are the same? So forget about the rest of it. Just focus on these two equations. Let's see what happens if M1 and M2 are the same mass. Let's say if M1 is equal to M2, and this call it, because they are the same, call it just M. Right? What happens V1 prime is what? Becomes M minus M divided by 2M, which is 0. This becomes 2M divided by M plus M, which is 2M. 2M over 2M is 1 times V2, right? So V1 prime becomes V2, right? And what about here? V2 prime. This becomes 2M divided by 2M times V1, and this becomes 0, right? So V2 prime becomes V1. So if the two masses are the same, you see that the final velocity of 1 becomes initial velocity of 2, the final velocity of 2 becomes initial velocity of 1. Means they interchange their velocities. Isn't it neat? Now, especially, what happens if V2 is 0? Means the second one is initially at rest. The first one comes hit, and the second, uh, second one is at rest. What happens? When the second one is at rest, means the first one becomes rest. The second one goes at the initial velocity of that one, right? Yeah. Let, let's see if we can, you see in here, if these cards are uh, almost the same, the same mass. So if I have the second one at rest and move the first one, this one remains at rest, the other one goes at the same speed, right? Again, right? Let's push this with a smaller speed, and this is the largest one. You see this? This goes with a small speed this way, that with the large speed. So you see that principle in action, actually. All right. Now we want to see. What happens with Newton's cradles? So, you see when, when we take one of these and then let them go, the last one goes with the same speed. All of them seem to be stopping and then the last one goes. Why, why do you think that happens? That's right. Yeah. You see, if V2 is 0 and V1, V1 is V, then uh, the V2 becomes, V2 prime becomes V, and V1 prime becomes 0, right? So it means that if one uh, comes at the speed V, the other one stopping, one stops, two goes. Then two hits the third one, two stops, three goes. And then three st hits the fourth one. Three stops, fourth goes. Fourth hits a fifth. Then fourth stop, fifth goes with the same speed. If they are all elastic, it happens uh, one by one. And also, if you have two of them, two of them go on the other side. Okay, now let's get back to the cradle. As one of my smart students mentioned, when you pull one of the balls to the side and release it, the collision happens one by one. 
and as a result you see that the last ball moves with the same speed as the first one before collision so the key point here is that the collisions happen one by one and because the balls are identical and have the same mass they exchange their velocities in each collision so let's look at this once more in slow motion ball one hits ball two with velocity v that is shown with the green arrow after this collision ball one stops and ball two goes with velocity v now ball two hits ball three ball two stops and three moves with velocity v and then three hits four three stops and four goes then four hits five four stops and five goes here is the whole action in real time not so real okay now let's see what happens when you pull two of them and release Balls 1 and 2 are initially moving with the speed V. Ball 2 hits 3, 2 stops and 3 goes. Then ball 1 hits 2 and at the same time 3 hits 4. Then ball 1 and 3 stop and 2 and 4 go. Now 2 and 4 hit 3 and 5, 2 and 4 stop and 3 and 5 go. Then 3 hits 4, 3 stops and 4 goes with 5. But wait. It might seem a bit odd that 5 waits for 4 to get hit by 3 and then they go together. The reason is that the collision between steel balls happens so fast that during the collision between 3 and 4, ball 5 can move only a few micrometers. So the apparent waiting is fairly justified. Here's the whole action in a faster pace. I hope you enjoyed this video. Good day and have a great time.